Hello and welcome to the Ryan Rye Mechanic channel. Glad to have you here, as always. And I wanted to go over uh, something today, a uh, comment on my videos. Uh, first of all, I love it when you guys comment. It's amazing. And I love to respond. And sometimes my responses are best made in a video because I can do things in a video I can't on a response without typing uh, 10 pages of stuff. As if some of you follow, you can easily see that. So anyways, today I wanted to talk a little bit about wheels and delamination. So let's get right into that. Now get ready, here we go. As always, if you guys like my videos, please like and subscribe because it tells me that people are liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. And without that, I wouldn't know that people like my videos and or subscribe to my channel. So liking and subscribing is very important to do. Moving on. Okay, so question came to me. Very nice question, well thought out. Let's read it here, so I might have to sidetrack, sorry. Uh, basically, the, this person was saying that uh, their ride kept going down for maintenance. And it appeared the polyurethane coating on the wheel had lost a chunk both times. And then their friend went to the park a couple weeks later and they said the same ride was down for, again, a wheel problem. Uh, first of all, how are you guys finding out that wheels are delaminating? Like, who are you talking with? That's not something that normal people figure out, you know? So, but you know, that's, that's kind of, that, that's kind of you guys in general. My, my audience knows way more than most anybody else does. So kudos to you. Um, that's my inner roller coaster nerd. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I was always very partial to wheels. I don't know why. Something about the wheels of ride. I always loved the wheels. I don't know why. I just, I always loved them. Um, actually got me my job. Funny. But yeah, it got me my job uh, working at an amusement park. So that was interesting. Uh, so first question, number one, how often do you have to replace the wheels on most coasters? Uh, is more than once a day excessive? So it depends. So each roller coaster is dynamic. It has its a different load. It, it goes different speeds. They all have their different problems. When assemblies become out of adjustment and the train's allowed to wander more left to right on the track, you can start damaging wheels faster than others. Um, but when it comes to the majority of wheels, uh, especially on an older roller coaster, um, what happens most of the time is that the wheels become old and they start doing like this person saw, they start doing what's called chunking out. Chunking out is where the wheel is going along just fine and it loses part of its urethane. That it actually happens. Older, they get cracks in them and they just come apart. So on a general ride, let's say a general roller coaster, I actually plan on replacing about one or two wheels a week. That's about it. Most of the time these aren't coming apart, they're not really chunking out bad, um, but depending on it, you can you can keep an eye on it. What's happening in this particular scenario here um, that the person's talking about is that the wheel is probably old. Most times when you pull wheels off for rehab, one of the reasons I can make this video, um, here's a wheel right here. Right? Looks nice. Anyways, this is a guide wheel off of a, this one's off of a SLC. When we inspect this wheel in the morning time, the main thing we do is we turn it all the way around the surface and we're looking for cracks. We're looking for little chips and cracks here. Typically what happens is actually when the wheels start to crack, they crack on the loading surface. So what that means is that it cracks right here on the face and it'll be just looks like a black straight line going across it and you can actually let that ride for a long time depending on the rides uh, severity on the track so this can crack right there and it can start going all the way out to the side and then once it reaches the side of the wheel and turns down on this corner right here that's typically when it's like okay we're gonna have to replace this wheel soon um, 
that is not an even process all the way around. Sometimes you can come to that wheel in the morning time and see a crack there and then say, yeah, that's fine. Uh, from experience, I know we've got, you know, a week before this wheel goes. And then the next day you come back and look at that wheel again and it could have a chunk of urethane missing out of the side of it, which case you need to replace it right there in the morning. So what happens is that these wheels that don't wear that, that often, they don't cup excessively. Notice how this one's pretty flat on top and some of the other wheels you've seen are more like a U shape because they're cupping. So when wheels don't cup to the track and they stay like this, they get relatively little to no wear at all. And they can just sit there for an indefinite period of time and just run. But after three four years in service, the urethane becomes old and it starts to dry out and harden and it's prone to cracking much faster. And then you can have a complete delamination. On regular we uh, trains, you don't see that that much. If you're talking about things that have wheels that are crushed to the track with like a spring-loaded mechanism, you see that sometimes on those, but literally this will be looking somewhat like this, maybe a little more tattered than normal. And then you get a call that the ride's making unusual noise, sounds like metal on metal. And then you can go out there and find just the aluminum hub left and all the urethane in one shot just peeled straight off. It's happened to me several times. You can go out the next morning in the infield and literally find this entire tread sitting in the infield out there. It happens, just something that happens in the industry. So most of the time you can get about two to three years out of a wheel before they have to be retreaded. This one right here is a retread. Um, so this wheel, as you can see right there, this one was made by Vacoma, and that's who made the hub. And then once the original urethane started cracking on it, or maybe it's got damaged somehow, like sometimes it get dropped in the shop during rehab time and stuff, get a big scar across it, you have to replace them. Um, we send these to a company where they go through, they check the bores inside and outside where the bearings sit, and then they uh, check the, the spokes. In these cases, this is cast aluminum. So the, these older style wheels with the hubs, the spokes like this, they're very prone to cracking in these areas. Um, that's every manufacturer, every style rim. So it's not like something I, it's not a black mark on, on this manufacturer at all. Every manufacturer has it happen. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, so we NDT them to make sure that they're not cracked. Then they check the bores to make sure that they're not um, out of tolerance or out of round. And then after that, they put them in a machine they machine off the urethane back down to a good hub. This particular one was done by, I can't see it on here really, very faint in the background, but you won't be able to see it. Uh, this one was done by Euromet, company out in California. Very familiar with those guys. They do great work out there. I can't say enough good things about Euromet. Anyways, um, they will take that. They put a special coating on it. It is a absolute top secret coating that they put on to bond this urethane to the aluminum. And we've seen this done. I've, I've tried other companies just to see what's out there. And that bonding fails on a lot of other companies. I don't know why, but you know, if you're, if you're ride maintenance and watching this out there, it's like, if you, ha if you haven't done it yet, go get wheels redone at Euromet. Those guys, <laughs> Those guys are awesome. Um, it's not a sales pitch, by the way. It's not a paid video. I just really like the work that they do. They recode it, put the service back on it, and then they ship it back, and it's ready for use again. And pretty much until we wear it out again or something else, it's ready. It's good to go. Uh, you can retread a wheel about two times before your hub thickness is too thin, at which point then the whole wheel is trash, has to be thrown away. Uh, this is the reason why manufacturers, this NDT right here, which costs extra money to check for cracks in these spokes, this is the reason why manufacturers are now switching to billet wheels. 
They've made this surface a little thicker so you can get more life out of them over the entire lifespan. And they don't require NDT. So they just get in there and they just peel the coating back off, put it back on. As long as your race bores on the inside are fine, that wheel's good to go. But the cost is a lot more. This wheel ND, uh, for uh, billet is much more expensive than this cast wheel, which the companies still sell, still, but they're a little cheaper. Second part to the question, is there a specific reason with the track or with the trains would cause the roller coaster wheels to lose chunks of the polyurethane? Sorry, I'm answering multiple questions at the same time. Um, so like I just said, that is due to age. And that's typically when you see those, that's, that's when you see a rut like this, is like once the train, you typically, a lot of times you will have a train of wheels recoded all at the same time, and then that happens. It's like, oh, two, three years down the road, suddenly you start losing every wheel. It's like one week, it's like, oh, I lost three wheels this week. And then the next week, it's like, oh, I lost five wheels this week. And then next week, it's like, I lost 10 wheels this week. Then it's a problem because you're going to run out of wheels quick. Typically have a lot of spares. Sometimes most parks carry about a whole nother train's worth of spare wheels, but you never know. The process to get this done is not a quick process. These companies are typically really backed up for time-wise. Uh, number three, this person was referencing a uh, Chance Morgan roller coaster. It says, have you heard anything about Morgan wheels being problematic? Do different manufacturers need their wheels replaced more often? Again, nothing really with the manufacturers. Manufacturers do the best they can. It's more the nature of the ride that it's on. Um, and it's uh, temperature conditions, how much lube they put on the rails, uh, all sorts of different variations of things will cause wheels to wear differently. Some do cup really bad and they will literally wear the diameter of the wheel down to nothing. I know, I took a class by Euromet on amusement safety wheels and uh, one of the wheels they showed, they're like, look, this wheel has been worn all the way down. Wasn't this wheel, but I mean, wheel has been worn all the way down to the surface and you could literally see the aluminum that it was riding on. And everyone in the class was like, oh my gosh, that is so horrible. And I'm sitting there going, oh, that was from our park. <laughs> uh, that was our wheel. Yeah, that was, that was off an impulse coaster. And those things can chew through the wheel sometimes pretty fast because um, I've got a slow motion video. I kind of just, just quick slow motion video. But when impulse coasters launch, the wheels don't turn. I'll set this on the camera. When the, when the wheel launches, it literally slides on the track like this for just a little bit. I'm exaggerating, of course, but it slides a little bit before it actually starts to turn and roll. So yeah, impulse coasters, launch coasters, those sort of things, anything that's accelerated, uh, they're extra hard on all their wheels because the wheels typically don't accelerate as fast as the train does, and that causes lots of problems. And then number four, about how much does it cost a park to replace the wheel? Kind of a loaded question. Not sure of the exact answer. Um, you can buy these wheels for about $400 a piece and say, okay, that's a $400 wheel. There's no bearings inside of it. There's no races in there. There's no nothing else. There's no grease in there. Um, so let's say for this wheel right here, I buy this wheel for $400, just make it easy. Um, the inner bearing that goes in there is about $30, so that's $430. The back bearing that goes in here, it's much larger. Uh, back bearing right there, uh, that goes in that bore, is about another $40. So what are you, 40, 50, 60, 70? Rear, uh, seal that goes in there is about... $20, that's $4.90. And then the grease, mm, grease is always a fun one. The grease that goes in there is some really special stuff that this company makes that we found the best stuff to use in roller coaster wheels and it's almost a standard anywhere where companies or parks can do this. It's called Kluber, Kluberplex Isotopaz NB52. That stuff is awesome. It goes in here. Um, that stuff a lot of times runs you about $100 a tube. 
So you don't need much in there. The wheels require very, very little grease. The more grease you put in, the more friction there is, the faster it wears down, the slower your train goes. Greasing wheels is how you valley roller coasters. That is not good to do. So you wanna put lightweight, fast grease in just a little tiny bit. We're talking three cc's, four cc's per wheel. That's it. And then, uh, of course, the first time around, load it, load it heavy, load it, load it with as much weight as you can to make sure that new grease is able to break in and actually, hopefully the train makes it around the track. Honestly, every mechanic, that first time the train goes around the track, it becomes extremely religious all of a sudden. Everyone is praying as it goes up that lift hill that it makes it around the circuit the first time because they're not easy to take off the track at all. Uh, they're not designed to come off mid-track. They're designed to come off at the end. So, oof, what a nightmare. Anyways, I was very interested with roller coaster wheels. That's one of the reasons why I have one. <laughs> I actually have several of them. Um, I've always been interested in roller coaster wheels. They they just have something about it. Uh, when I took a job interview at the last place I worked, uh, one of the things I was, I, I was very excited during the interview and they can tell I was just genuinely excited and they told me afterwards. So they took me to a, a tour through the shop and sitting there was one of the uh, uh, B&M road wheels, which are about, uh, about 390 millimeters, 360 millimeters across somewhere right around there. And uh, I saw that on there. I'm like, is, is that a road wheel? And they said, yeah. That's to our uh, our big Medusa roller coaster. And I'm like, ooh. And then I paused and I, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. I know I was in the middle of a job interview, but I was just like, can I pick that up? And they're like, yeah, go ahead. And I picked it up and I was just like, this is so cool. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm holding a road wheel to a roller coaster. So years later, I was talking with the guy who hired me, and actually that was the moment when I picked up the wheel and just showed genuine like amazement about it. And he's like, that was actually the moment when I decided to hire you. That was actually the reason. Roller coaster wheels are the reason why I got a job working on them. <laughs> it's kind of funny, right? Okay, as always, like and subscribe. If you like hearing my stories, if you like seeing stuff like this, if you don't like seeing stories or seeing stuff like this, uh, go ahead and subscribe anyway. Maybe I'll talk about something different. I don't know. Anyways, I'm Ryan the Ride Mechanic. Hope you enjoyed the show. Have a good day. Bye.